making top reseller pricing mistakes that are costing you big profits. These are mistakes that maybe you've been making uh, from the very beginning of your Amazon business. Maybe it's a mistake that you've slowly started to make as you kind of got comfortable with your Amazon business. And, and so we want to be able to fix these mistakes because these mistakes are literally costing you money. They are um, opportunities out there for you to make more profits, more ROI, faster sales, but some of these mistakes are causing you not to get those higher profits. Some of these mistakes are causing your sales to slow down. So we want to talk about four main mistakes uh, tonight and tackle these together and see what we can do to fix these mistakes. We're going to talk about what the mistake is, why it's a mistake, and how to fix it. And we'll do that together. Uh, before we get into it, I just want to make sure that you are aware that if you are watching this uh, webinar for me for the first time i give away stuff so my gifts to you uh, i've got a book called seller central tips my wife and i put this together helps you fix a lot of different uh, issues with seller central deals with reimbursements refunds other correcting uh, amazon glitches you can get that by just going to fultonfba.com slash seller central tips and your email address and we will send this to your inbox we'll also throw in uh, an amazon seller acronym sheet that kind of tells you all the acronyms that amazon sellers use uh, so that you know what people are talking about if they're talking about LTSF or they're talking about PL or they're talking about, uh, you know, WAL, uh, WM or lots of other stuff. Um, a ASIN, when we're talking about an ASIN, what does that mean? Why is it important to you? That's free. We'll even throw in some other free gifts for you uh, just for going to FultonFBA.com slash Seller Central Tips. Um, we like giving away free stuff. So do you want to tune in know after the presentation, we will have a Q&A. So if you have questions, put them in the, uh, the control panel. We'll come to those questions. And we're going to do a giveaway at the end of the presentation. So stick around for that. So you might be wondering, am I even in the right place? Should I be watching this? Well, I'll try to make things clear. You're in the right place. If you want to make the most profits, the most ROI out of every single sale, you're in the right place. If you, you're just tired of your competition tanking prices. Yeah, that's frustrating. You're in the right place if you wonder if the price that you pick is the perfect price for your products. That's a lot of P's in the one sentence. The price you pick is the perfect price for your products. You're in the right place. If you desire to sell your inventory items faster than you're currently selling them, you are in the right place. And you're in the right place if you want to learn the most common pricing mistakes and how to easily fix them you're in the right place. So that's what we're going to be focusing on over the next hour or so, and we're going to enjoy doing that together. All right, well, who am I? Why should you even trust me? Uh, my name is Stephen Smotherman. That's a, a picture of my my wife. Uh, that's three out of the four of my, of my boys. Um, that is us um, on the field at Globe Live Field where the Texas Rangers play baseball. Uh, we got to do a tour. We got to go on the field. We got to play catch. We got our gloves with us. We're, we're having some fun. So those are that's my family. And um, I've been selling on Amazon since 2011. Um, before that, I was doing eBay, doing eBay as a hobby. It was a cool little hobby, brought in some side hustle income, but Amazon just totally changed the game. The fact that I could send all my inventory to Amazon and it's stored in Amazon warehouse. And when a customer buys it, Amazon takes care of, you know, first they store all my inventory and they organize it. And then when the customer buys it, they ship it to the customer. So much stuff is outsourced. I love that. And it finally helped me uh, to really make a full-time income selling on my own. In fact, in 2012, Amazon awarded me as a top holiday seller. I mean, I've only been selling on Amazon for a year and they awarded me as a top holiday seller, which means I have top 25% of all sales on Amazon. What, me? After being a seller for a year? That's crazy. And that my customer service, you know, my feedback and all my scores and metrics were really good. And that was awesome. Now, this was the last year, 2012 was the last year that they handed that out, but it was cool just to see after a year, the kind of success that you can have selling on Amazon. And I, and since that was in 2012, I've been selling for a decade. Now it's 2022. Uh, uh, so over a decade of selling on Amazon, it's been awesome. In 2013, my wife encouraged, I, well, first I uh, married Rebecca in 2013. A few months later, she encouraged me to start the blog full-time FBA. Um, and she joined my Amazon business as well. And in 2019, we started the full-time FBA show podcast. Um, you can find out more about the blog, fulltimefba.com. Uh, and there's a little tab up there for podcasts if you want to know about that. But the podcast, you know, 15, 20 minute episodes focused on helping you turn part time hours into a full time income. And that's one of those strategies. Well, that's one of the things we're talking about tonight. The pricing strategies that we're talking about fixing helps us make more money, helps us to turn part time hours into a full time income. You know, 
I have been selling on Amazon for over 10 years and mistakes happen. And I want you to learn from my mistakes. So mistakes happen and, and they're real. I mean, this cat um, probably did not think that this bale of hay was going to get picked up. And, and now this cat is holding on for its dear life as it drives down the road. Mistakes were made. And maybe you find yourself in situations like that where all of a sudden you like you wake up or you look around, you realize, oh, my gosh, how did I get here? What happened? Mistakes were made. Or maybe you are involved with something like Amazon and you get tangled up and all of a sudden, like, you know, you're involved with a lot of different things and you get tangled up and you got, kind of get stuck. I mean, mistakes happen. It's normal, even with an Amazon business. Uh, sometimes you might feel in your Amazon business that you're almost in over your head, that you might be drowning. Um, in fact, even with our finances with our Amazon business and trying to make money, I mean, does this feel like you with your Amazon business that you're like just barely treading water, that you're just barely making enough money to, to make it work? Um, it might be because some, some, some mistakes have happened and we wanna avoid those mistakes. And sometimes mistakes kind of make you feel like you're in the toilet, right? Some mistakes, I mean, if you lose money on a product, um, if you buy an inventory item and the competitors tank the price, it feels like you're in the toilet, right? Um, we need help or help, as it's said in this little mean, but, you know, it, there's, there is help out there. I want to give you some help. Um, some mistakes, we kind of feel stuck <laughs> between a rock and a hard place or a door and a screen door. Uh, we get kind of stuck in our business. One of the reasons we get stuck is because some of the pricing mistakes that we make. And then finally, always check the dimensions when buying online. You know, there are some mistakes that we make that might be little mistakes that have big consequences. We want to avoid those. So let's not waste any more time. I'm going to open up some uh, bubbly sparkling water, and we're gonna get into the first mistake right now. All right, so the pricing mistake number one, it's a common mistake, it's a big thumbs down mistake, and it's one almost Amazon, almost every Amazon seller makes, All right? So when we're thinking about pricing our inventory, a mistake that is very common that happens a lot is this mistake. We price our inventory to be the lowest price, this is a very common mistake. Most people think that if I'm the lowest price, I'm gonna get the next sale. Well, that's not always true. Some people think the only way I can get a sale is to be the lowest price. Why would someone else pay uh, for an item that's cost more than the lowest price? It happens on Amazon every single day. So why is this a mistake? Because the buy box rotates. So the buy box is the little box in the top corner of an Amazon product page where over 80%, probably up to 85% now of all Amazon sales come from. So just be, even if there's like 20 or 40 or 150 other competitors trying to sell on that item, the one who's in the buy box gets most of the sales. And the buy box does not always go to the lowest priced item. It will for a little bit, but the buy box rotates. It rotates between multiple sellers. And it in the buy box, you know, it is, uh, it's moving and it's always changing. And so you don't always have to have the lowest price. You know, you can price a little bit higher. As long as you're within the right range, you can get some of the buy box time. Why else is it a mistake? You're missing out on more profits. If you are always priced to be the lowest price, you're missing out on profits because you can still sell and be in the buy box rotation and have buy box time by having a higher price than the lowest price. So even though that's like, you know, it could be five, 25 cents or a dollar difference, imagine making five cents, 25 cents, a dollar more on every item that you're selling on Amazon where the buy box is rotating, that adds up over time. That's profits that will come to you that adds up over time. So how can we fix this mistake? Either, there's two different strategies when we price our inventory when we send it to Amazon. Um, we match the buy box. That's a strategy that a lot of people do. I'm just gonna match the buy box. Whatever the buy box is, I'm gonna match it. Uh, and and that's what uh, a lot of people do. Cause you know, if the buy box is, you know, if the seller who's in the buy box right now has the buy box, then I know that price is gonna be in the buy box rotation. And if you wanna be a little bit more strategic, price within 5% of the lowest price, 5%, or maybe if you want to feel more comfortable, 4% or 3%, in that price range percentage is where the buy box is going to be rotating. Now, there's a lot of other 
factors to who gets more time in the buy box and all that. We've fact, uh, you know, uh, that I, there's more more information that I can, I can teach you about how to understand the buy box and get more time in the buy box. But you price within 5% at most, maybe 4% or 3%, whatever's more comfortable for you, of the lowest price, then you'll probably be in that buy box rotation. So that's how to fix pricing mistake number one. Don't ever match the lowest price or worse, trying to price even lower than the lowest price i mean that just leads a race to the bottom and no one wins the race to the bottom so that's pricing mistake number one pricing your inventory to be the lowest price uh, pricing mistake number two another thumbs down and this is this is a mistake that's everywhere mistakes mistakes are everywhere not rechecking your prices from time to time so why is this a mistake competition changes their prices all the time amazon as a seller changes their prices all the time and you might be selling maybe too high and you need to lower it to get a bit to get the in the buy box or you might be selling it too low and you're going to sell so fast where you could have sold it at a higher price so not rechecking your prices from time to time most people set their price of the inventory items that they're selling on amazon when they're creating their shipment to Amazon, when they list their item, if they're doing it merchant fulfilled, if they're doing an FBA, when they're creating their shipment and boxing it up and about to send it to Amazon. So if you're selling an FBA, how long does it take to get to Amazon? Maybe it takes a week to get to the warehouse, to get checked in, to go live on Amazon. Maybe it gets in a little faster, maybe it's a little slower depending on the time of the year. But in that time, more competitors could have come in Maybe they've lowered the price, you know, a dollar or two. Maybe they've, uh, you know, and, and you're just priced too high now and you're not going to be in the buy box rotation and you're fine if you're priced like a dollar or two lower, you know, I mean, you sure you wanted to get the sale at the higher price, but you can also get a sale if you just lower it a dollar or two. Well, guess what? If you're not checking your prices from time to time and checking in on your prices, you're missing out on that opportunity to maybe just lower your price just a little bit and be able to get the next sale or this happens a lot more often than most people think it happens you send your items to amazon and your lower priced competitors sell out and now the price is even higher so maybe you send your item to amazon at 25 dollars, and you send it to amazon on monday you price it on monday and it gets to amazon you know that next saturday goes live that next sunday but guess what? All the $25 competitors have sold out. And now the price is about $32. But you're still priced at $25. You could, If you were checking your prices from time to time, you could see that your price could be raised and you could have made another 5 or $7. And again, this happens a lot more often than people think. Because most, most people don't think it happens or they just don't think about the possibility of it happening. The lower price competition selling out and you're missing out on more profits. So... That is a mistake. You might be selling it too high and just lowering it a little bit can get you a sale or you're pricing it too low and it's going to sell really fast, but you're missing out on higher profits by not keeping your price competitive. So how can you fix this mistake? If you manually reprice your inventory, set up reminders, whether it's on a daily basis, a weekly basis, something like that, whatever works best with your business model, set up reminders to check your prices and manually reprice to keep it competitive. So if you're sending it to Amazon, maybe wait a week after you send it to Amazon and check those inventory items to see if they're still priced competitively. Now, of course, manually repricing your inventory can get really time consuming if you're doing that for you know multiples of items. If you've got dozens and dozens of inventory or hundreds of inventory items, manually repricing and checking on them, each one can, can really you know, take up a lot of time. So another way to fix this mistake is using an automatic repricer. An automatic repricer where you can set up your own rules to automatically change your price in relation to what your competitors are doing and what's happening on the Amazon sales page. Uh, personally, we recommend the repricing tool Be Cool, um, spelled B-Q-O-O-L. Um, Fulltimefba.com slash be cool gets you a two week free trial. So check that out. Um, to fixing a pricing mistake, you can do it manually. That's free. 
where you use an automatic repricer. Um, that is really, really good. Um, Amazon has a free automatic repricer, but it doesn't reprice up and it only reprices down. Um, and so that's just something that you need to be aware of. It's free, but if it doesn't reprice up, I don't want to use that. I want an automatic repricer that reprices up and down compared to whatever my competition is doing. So that's pricing mistake number two, not rechecking your prices from time to time. All right. Pricing mistake number three, the definition of insanity is repeating the same mistakes and expecting different results. This is a mistake that a lot of people miss or that a lot of people make because they're totally missing some valuable information that can help them make much better pricing decisions um, with manually or automatic repricing. And the third mistake we're going to dissect today is not exploring pricing trends. Now, what, what do I mean by that? Well, here's a mistake. Here's why it's a mistake. If you're not exploring pricing trends, like I said before, prices change all the time. Competitors sell out and prices go up. New competitors come in, sometimes prices go down. If you would have seen ahead of time what's happening, you know, maybe there's an inventory item that just got clearanced out at a Walmart and it's being clearanced out at every Walmart in the nation. And Amazon is about to be flooded with this huge amount of supply of this particular clearance item. Well, when supply goes up and the demand does not meet it, prices go down. That's simple supply and demand. So it's a mistake if you're not exploring pricing trends. Prices could be tanking and you don't even know it. You assume that price is going to stay the same, but there's ways that you can see pricing trends to know if prices are going up or down. It's also a mistake because prices could be going up and your price is too low. Again, the prices are going up and you're pricing at this lower mark when you could be pricing at a higher mark and totally expect to get it at that price. So how do we fix this mistake? The best way to fix this mistake is very, very simple. It is become best friends with Keepa. If you've never heard about Keepa, you can check it out, fulltimefba.com slash Keepa. Keepa is a tool that tracks almost every single item on Amazon with their pricing history and their sales rank history. You can look at buy box history. You can look at pricing history for different conditions. You can look at tons of information that will help you make a good decision. Let me show you Keepa really quickly. This is Keepa, fulltimefba.com slash read Keepa for a video version of this uh, um, type of training. But this is what a Keepa graph looks like. I mean, you can see right here, we got the, the price the price of, of item on one side, we got the sales rank item on the other side of the graph, we got the dates on the bottom of the screen. I Right now I have it set up to look at the last three months. So you can see in the last three months, this item has been usually around $50. Um, but you can also see this orange shaded area and this white area. The orange shaded area shows me that Amazon's in stock. This white area is out of stock. Whoa, look at the prices when Amazon goes out of stock. The prices shoot up from $50, oh, up to $150, $200. That's insane. That's awesome as a reseller to have that kind of information and to know that information. Um, but you can see that when Amazon's in stock, the price is pretty consistent. But when Amazon's out of stock, the prices shoot up. So, you know, you, while you're outsourcing, you can know these type of pricing trends. I mean, you can potentially, you can potentially buy the item for, you know, if you're buying it at a store for $25, $40, even $50, you can see like, hey, you know what? For about like a third of the time over the last three months, Amazon's been out of stock and the prices have drastically gone up. That's missing out on an opportunity to find that, in, to buy that inventory and just wait for Amazon to go out of stock. If Because you can see on the graph that there's proof that Amazon goes out of stock and you can expect it again and then you can price higher and be able to sell it at the higher price when Amazon's out of stock. So that's just a little sample of using Keepa to make really good pricing decisions. Um, there's other times where you can actually literally see the graph on Keepa that the price is going up. And you can say, instead of matching that price, I'm gonna see what that trend is from a week from now and kind of price up there. Or you can be outsourcing and you can actually see the price trending downward and be like, um, do I still have enough wiggle room for some ROI if the price continues to dwindle downward? So using Keepa and be having Keepa become your best friend 
can help you avoid the mistake not exploring pricing trends, pricing history. So again, fultimfba.com slash Kipa is how to use is 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 the link to go direct direct to Kipa. Fultimfba.com slash read Kipa is a walkthrough video showing you even more information about Kipa. All right, let's get to pricing mistake number four. Pricing mistake number four. There's Mr. Bean. They say we all learn from our mistakes. That's why I'm making as many as possible. I'll soon be a genius. I mean, as long as you learn from your mistakes, yes, your mistakes can help you become a genius. I've learned from these mistakes. Hopefully you can learn from it too. So pricing mistake number four, automatically lowering your prices in Q4. A lot of newbies do this, especially. Why is it a mistake? Newbies usually freak out, newbies being new Amazon sellers. They freak out in Q4 and they lower their prices. They see that their competition is freaking out and lowering their prices. They're not selling their items fast enough. It's like the beginning of December and I thought I'd be sold out by now, but I'm not. And and what happens if uh, if I if I can't sell this items? I need to sell it. So I start selling my lowering my prices because I'm freaking out. Well, sometimes it's a good idea to lower your prices, but if a keep a graph shows you that the price is going to recover, or maybe it's just because there's, I mean, there's a way in Keepa to actually see the stock levels of your competition. So you can actually see, hey, the prices are going down, but the stock levels are also going down. And and I really think that it's possible you can find, you can read a Keepa graph and see like a, a, the pricing trend that in Q4, that the supply is going to get low, so low at some point that the higher, the lower priced sellers are going to sell out and you're going to be able to sell at a much higher price later. That's a big deal and how you can make more money in Q4 by not freaking out and lowering your prices. So you might miss out on big Q4 price increases because you are just automatically lowering your prices in Q4 when there's certain inventory, most inventory actually, you can be patient on and you will be able to get your higher price later. So that is a mistake. So how do you fix this mistake? Um, don't follow the masses when they drop their prices. Don't just drop your prices because of the competition is. You should look at a Keepa graph. Again, check the pricing history. Where? Keepa, fulltimefba.com slash Keepa to make a better decision on what type of, of, of pricing you're going to, pricing strategy that you're going to employ with this particular item. So, those are four pricing mistakes. Here's some final thoughts. We're gonna do Q and A in a minute, and I've got a special deal for you. But a few final thoughts. Let's continue with the memes. So mistakes, mistakes are everywhere. Let's learn from those mistakes. Learn from these mistakes. In fact, I've got tons more to share with you about pricing. I'll do that in just a second. Um, and if you do make mistakes, be kind to yourself. We all make mistakes. You learn from those mistakes and grow and be able to do things better. You know, SpongeBob says, when someone asked me how I got better, <laughs> lots and lots of mistakes. I've made tons of mistakes over the last decade of selling in my Amazon business, and I've got tons to teach you. Um, so you mean to tell me it's okay to make mistakes? Yes, it's okay to make mistakes. Just don't keep making them. You're not allowed to make these mistakes you know, anymore because you know about them. So let's learn from them, all right? Because when you correct the mistakes, the world is saved. That's just, that's what happens, all right? So um, hopefully that's helped you with your Amazon business. We got Q and A and a giveaway and coming in just a minute, but, but first I wanna show you how I can help you even more with pricing strategies to make more money on Amazon and sell your inventory items faster. Uh, my wife and I just put together this course. It's launching right now. Uh, the Reseller's Guide to Pricing for Profits. Um, it is a course that is a combination video course over three hours teaching you everything I know about pricing and a 70 page ebook. The, the content in the video course and the ebook are the same. So you can be like, hey, I'd like to read it. I'm more of a reader. Hey, we have a book for you. And if you're like more like, hey, I like to listen or I like to watch, we've got a video course. So we've got that. There's a few parts in the book that we direct you to the video course because it's screen capture and we want to make sure that you can see that. But most of the uh, the content is the same in both. Um, you get five bonuses at no additional charge. We'll talk about those bonuses in just a second. Um, you get instant access to the entire course when you purchase it. It's not like a drip 
a content course that gives you a little bit now and a little bit a week from now. No, you get all of it at once. You can binge the whole course if you want. There's a 60-day money-back guarantee. No questions asked. If you don't feel like it's worth the cost, then you can get your money back. You have lifetime ownership. I do this with all of my courses. Lifetime ownership, which means you buy it once. It's yours for life. If we add a new bonus, you get it for free. When we update the course next year or the year after, you get it for free. You get all future updates for free, all future bonuses uh, for free, lifetime ownership, one cost. And here's how you can get it. Fulltimefba.com slash pricing. Use the coupon code PROFITS. We'll save you $30 off of the cost of the course. And the course, is uh, it is amazing. I, I am like really proud of this course that my wife and I have put together for you because it really will help you to price your inventory items for bigger profits. You're going to make more money on the same inventory by taking this course and faster sales. You are going to sell your inventory items faster with this course. Now, some people might be like, yeah, if you raise your prices, you're gonna make more money, but that's gonna slow down sales, right? Not all the time. In fact, I've found the secret of raising your prices the right way, a strategic way, while selling your items faster than you would without this strategy. It is a strategic framework walking you through increasing your prices, so that's bigger profits, but also increasing your sales velocity, faster sales. It is it is beautiful combination, and I can't wait to show you. So in this course, the Reseller's Guide to Pricing for Profits, I'm going to help you develop that pricing strategy that will give you the highest possible profits while also quickly selling your inventory. You're going to be able to pick the perfect price for every item in your Amazon inventory. You're going to know how to get more sales even if you don't have the lowest price. You're going to have advanced strategies for manually and automatic repricing your products. We're going to go through seasonal pricing strategies to maximize your profits both in and out of season because the strategy of pricing in season and the strategy for pricing out of season, two different strategies. You want to know how to maximize your sales and profits for both in season and out of season items. And there's and so much more. So again, fulltimefba.com slash pricing, $30 off coupon code profits expires very soon. You want to take advantage of this very soon. Another thing with the reseller's guide to pricing for profits, you're going to be able to create more income and maximize your profitability throughout through smart pricing and repricing strategies. You're going to sell your items quickly and profitably before your competitors tank the price. How's that sound? Competitors, you're selling your items and you're already sold before the competitors even tank the price. How's that sound? You're going to be confident that in your decision to either hold your price or lower it, because sometimes you got to lower it. Sometimes you need to hold your price. I'm going to show you how to be confident in that decision. And I'm going to help you avoid the costly mistakes that most sellers make with the pricing, not just the four that we talked about today in this webinar, but even more pricing mistakes to avoid. Um, and some know some advanced Q4 pricing strategies to maximize your sales and profits during the biggest, most amazing selling time of the year. And become an expert in pricing so it soon becomes an automatic habit that you do on autopilot. This is not a pricing strategy that you have to like keep referring to over. You're gonna be able to get it like that and it's going to have long lasting impact on your Amazon business. And we've got some bonuses that are a lot of fun with this course. Um, bonus number one, how to fix high price alerts. Have you ever gotten an email from Amazon? Hey, your inventory item has become suppressed because we think you have a high pricing alert. And you're like, I don't have it. I did not high price it too high. We show you how to fix those high price alerts um, in every possible situation. Um, sometimes you did price it too high. Okay, you just fix that. But sometimes you really do want to sell it at that particular price. You have a str strategic reason why you want to price it that high. We'll tell you how to fix those high price alerts, get your inventory items back active on Amazon so that you can sell your inventory item. Uh, we have a video about fixing a suppressed buy box. Like we said, 80 plus percent of sales on Amazon come from the buy box. And sometimes Amazon thinks the prices are too high for all the sellers. So they suppress the buy box. And don't let anybody have the buy box. We show you how to fix that in this video. We have repricing rules. We talked about the automatic repricer, be cool. We have the repricer rules to go with that. The double your sales repricer rules. That literally doubled my sales the first month I used it and has been helping me increase my sales ever since. The repricing rules for liquidation. If you have inventory items that you're like, I don't care what I sell it for, I wanna liquidate my inventory and sell it as soon as I can for the highest possible profit that I can, but still sell it as fast as possible, we have the liquidation repricing rules. 
We have repricer rules for shoe sellers. If you are a shoe or a clothing seller, we have repricer rules that are spe special just for you. And we have more repricing rules in production. In fact, we're about to have, we're about to release a used book repricer rule that will be released sometime in the, le in the next few weeks. So if you're a used book seller, we've got repricer rules to help you get that used by box um, in, and, and be able to get more sales. We're, we're perfecting it right now. It's not ready to be released right now, but we will be releasing it soon. And some other repricing rules. We're just going to continue. Anytime we find a repricing rule that works with our system and we test it out and we find that it works, um, we will put it in into the course. And remember, Reseller's Guide to Pricing for Profits has lifetime ownership. So that means every time we add a new pricing rule, boom, you get it for free. You don't have to pay any more for it. One price fulltimefba.com slash pricing for profits is where you can go to get this course be sure you use the coupon code profits for thirty dollars off of this course all right so again reseller's guide to pricing for profits fulltimefba.com slash pricing thirty dollars off coupon code profits um that is something I, I highly recommend this. This strategy is, is something that can really revolutionize your Amazon business, and it's amazing. All right, it's time for a giveaway. I'm actually going to give away a copy of this course to someone showing up live here. So I'm going to go through the attendees on my list here, and I'm going to pick somebody to give it to live. If you've already purchased the course, guess what? I'll give you a refund. Um, so who is here live? Um, I do not know if I'm if I am saying this correctly, but um, Napasanan, um, if you you just want a copy of this course, the Reseller's Guide to Pricing for Profits, um, I'll try to say it again, Napasasan. Um, I apologize if I messed up your name, but you are the random winner of this course. Reach out to me, fulltimefba.com/contact, and let me know you you won the, the course, and I will give you access of that. But congratulations, you won. All right, so let's get into some Q&A. I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can. So if you have not asked your question, but you've got a question about pricing, uh, let me know. All right, I'm going to start scrolling through. Uh, but apparently, a lot of you like the cat memes that I was uh, showing earlier. That's good. Um, William says, how do I determine minimum price so I don't lose money? So that's a really good question. Um, there's two ways to do it. There's a free way and then there's a paid way. The free way is going to the Amazon FBA calculator. If you're selling your inventory items, FBA or Merchant Fulfilled, the FBA calculator can help you. You can go to fulltimefba.com slash calculator. That just forwards you to the Amazon sales page. Excuse me that forwards you to the Amazon um, Seller Central page that has the Amazon FBA calculator. And you can punch in your, you know, you can punch in what you want to price it at. You can say what your buy cost is. You can put in what your shipping to Amazon cost is. You can put all that in. And with a click of a button, Amazon will calculate all the fees for you and tell you what your profit margin is, what your ROI is, what your take home profit is. It will tell you all of that information for both merchant fulfilled or seller fulfilled when you're fulfilling the items yourself from home or a workplace, um, or if you're doing an FBA. So, you know, you can figure all of that out and 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 punch in those, and it will tell you. Um, I use the automatic repricer Be Cool, and the cool thing about that is when you're looking at your minimum price, you can actually type in your minimum price. And on every single section in Be Cool where you enter a minimum price, there's a little calculator button. And you click that calculator button and it tells you, it does all the math for you there. So you can right there in the automatic repricer, pick a minimum price, click the, the, the little calculator button, and it tells you exactly what your ROI is, what your profit margin is, how much actual money you will be taking home if you sell this item uh, this month. So good question. That's what I do. Um, another question, um, is there a rule set for this? Um, I'm not sure. I'm sure that was probably a question asked about one of my tips. I'm not sure if you were talking about the, the seasonal items or the Q4 items or, you know, in season or out of season. Um, 
you know, we, we are working on different uh, inventory rules for be cool or for all those things. You know, we don't have them all ready right now. You know, we've got the double your sales repricing rules, the liquidation, the shoe, clothing uh, sales, and we're almost ready to release the book selling uh, repricer rules. Um, but, you know, we've got others in the works. So um, maybe you'll clarify that a little bit for me. All right, Katara says, you said to price it up to 5% up from the lower price. Is it okay to price it 5% of the buy box as well? Um, so there's a, there in most Amazon seller circles, um, most of the thought process is that you can price it within 5% of the buy box. Uh, most people will say that, and 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 it's that's even in the course. Price it within five percent of the buy box, but to be a little safer, to be maybe increase your time in the buy box just a little bit more. I I also like to teach people for to start off pricing it within five percent of the lowest price, because um, if you price it within five percent of the buy box price, um, and a person comes in and prices underneath the current lowest price, that might change the percentage. So you, you know, you might not be 5% away from the buy box price. It might be 5% or 6%. So um, it's a, that's a good question. Um, but yeah, there's the, both rules of, of, you know, or rules, what was the phrase? Um, both rule of thumbs are the same, you know, schools of thought are the same that, that usually either you price it within 5% of the lowest price or 5% of the buy box. Both of that will, will most likely give you time in the buy box. Um, so it's it's good to work it out either way. Um, let's see, another question. I'm guessing repricers work both ways. They will drop your price to your minimum limit as other people will drop their price. If you set your price higher, will it also make everyone else's on a repricer rise also? So Sherry, that's a really good question. When dealing with repricers, um, it depends on the rule that you set. So um, without giving away what my double your sales repricing rules are, um, there's a certain way that you can set up the repricing rule that you, you're you not repricing to be the lowest price. You're repricing to get the buy box. So the goal is to get the buy box, not to be the lowest price. If other sellers have a repricing rule to always be the lowest price, then then and say there's two sellers and they both have a repricing rule to be the lowest price, then then they'll they'll be like, I'm the lowest price. No, I'm the lowest price. No, I'm the lowest price. I'm the low and they'll have a race to the bottom. And what will happen is those prices will go down and those items will sell out. And maybe they're not profitable for that particular item, for that particular seller, but after they sell out, then the prices can go back up if the other uh, other sellers are ignoring uh, ignoring sellers who fight the price that way. Um, a lot of people also think, well, if I price it to be a little bit higher, this other person price to be the higher. Yes, it's possible it could go up until you hit your maximum price, and you're so it's possible that that happens. It is super rare. I I hardly ever see that happen. Uh, and when I do see it happen, like I said, they price so low that they sell out, and 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 they're they're out of inventory, so it goes back up to where the market really calls for the right kind of price that that needs. Or the prices go up, and the sales start stop happening because uh, the prices are too high. It's another thing when you want to pick your maximum price, you want to make sure it's a realistic price. You know, oh, I'm going to set my maximum price at $200 for this book. Okay, yes, there are a few books out there will go for $200, but um, that might be a little bit out of range. Might cause most people to to not buy the book anymore if it's $200. So I have a realistic max price for that. Hopefully that's been been helpful. Um, collectible board game repricing rule in the works. Um, so. The the yeah there is a collectible board game repricing rule in the works. Um, it's kind of so far we're we're it's we tweaked it a little bit from the used book um, repricing rule. So yeah, there will be a collectible board game. I know we just went through a a, a launch or a relaunch of our board game course. It was really awesome. Helped a lot of people focusing on selling new and used board collectible board games. So yeah, we are um, offering or going to be adding a collectible board game. Uh, repricing rules sometime in the future. It's our, our highest priority is though the used books 
um, repricing rule. In fact, if you do have ideas for repricing rule, I want a repricing rule for this situation or for this type of category or this type of item, let me know. I'll add it to my list and we'll work on it. I don't know when we'd be able to get all of it done, but we will work on it. If I know there's a demand, I want to meet that demand. All right. Don says, I didn't know Keepa showed items in stock. Where is that? So there's two, there's um there's two pieces of information that Keepa gives you. If you're looking at a Keepa graph, um, if you look at the historical data, uh, then actually let me let me show you real quick. I'm going to let's see. All right, so here's a Keepa graph of a Hot Wheels um, Hot Wheels item. There's two places where you can kind of see what the competition is doing. If you scroll down and look at historical data, click on that, I can see how many new sellers are selling this particular item. Now, it doesn't show me how many they have in stock. Keepa shows you that somewhere else. But I can also look and see, okay, the number of sellers is pretty consistent. It's usually about three or four, sometimes five. Uh, items in stock, so um, so that's where that shows you. Now, to see the competitors' numbers in stock, I'm going to go look at it on Amazon. This is going to Amazon, um, and I'm going to open up this little sidebar here. So here's Keepa showing me how many in stock. This this person has one in stock revealed by Keepa. The Keepa extension shows you this. Uh, this seller has five in stock, revealed by Keepa. This one has one in stock. This one has six in stock. So that's how you can see on a Keepa graph where um, where the you know how many items have are in stock. It actually shows you on the sales page. So hopefully that's helpful for you to see. Uh, to get the Keepa extension, you go to fulltimefba.com/keepa-extension. Uh, you can install that if you got a paid Keepa. A subscription again fulltimefba.com slash keepa to sign up for that uh, then you can see how many items they have in stock you can see what your competition stock levels are so hopefully that's been helpful don um diane says can you quickly recap everything you said i'm super late i'll watch the recording later oh diane it's funny um yeah you will get the the the, the recording will be sent out sometime tomorrow um be sure you watch that um and and you will see everything um, that I said. Um, but yeah, I, I'll actually just really very, very quickly recap uh, what I said, because I've got my notes right here. Pricing mistake number one, pricing your inventory to be the lowest. Don't, don't do that. I give you a lot of good reasons why to not do that and how to fix that. Pricing mistake number two, not rechecking your prices from time to time. That's a big mistake. I have reasons why and tons of reasons uh, how to fix that. Pricing mistake number three, not looking at pricing trends. Um, and so again, I talk about why that's a big mistake and how to fix that. Pricing mistake number four, automatically lowering your prices during Q4. Um, don't do that and I tell why and how to fix that. So so yeah, there's there's the, the fast 60 second recap and uh, hopefully that's been helpful. All right, Don says, how often should you check or change your prices. So if you are manually repricing your inventory, um, I'm, I might do it once a week. I mean, if you want to be, the, the more often you recheck your prices, the faster your sales are gonna be and the more competitive your prices are always going to be. So um, the, the faster that you check on that, the more you're gonna make. So the more often that you do it, so if you can handle it once a week, if you can handle it twice a week, you know, be like, I'm gonna do it every Monday and Thursday. Um, you know, doing it once a week, making sure at once once a week that you do that, um, or twice a month. Again, the further apart from when you check and reprice your inventory, the more the more likely your prices are not going to be competitive um, soon after you do that. Which is why we recommend using an automatic repricer. I use their automatic repricer. I use their lowest pricing uh, option. It updates my prices every 15 minutes. They have an option where you can update the prices every five minutes. I have not found that to be necessary. I update my prices every 15 minutes and um, and it's helped me to get faster sales, increase my profits. So good question, Don. 
Leslie says, sometimes Amazon comes onto the listing or the brand does. At that point, how do you decide whether or not to take a loss or just clear it? Great question, Leslie. Yeah, sometimes Amazon comes in on a listing. Um, again, sometimes I will use Kiva to see, is this the first time Amazon has come on or does Amazon come on and then go off? You remember the Kiva graph where I showed you the orange shaded area that has uh, shows me that Amazon's in stock and then the white part where Amazon is out of stock. So if Amazon shows a history of going in or out of stock, I'll just hold my price and and just be like, I'm just going to wait till Amazon goes out of stock and then I'll be able to sell it at a higher price. And most competitors do that. Um, but if, if Keepa shows that this is the first time Amazon's coming in on stock or the brand is now coming in on stock, usually pretty quickly I will... Um, you know, just price to sell out. I put in my liquidation repricing rules for those items because I want that capital back as soon as possible so I can reinvest it in other inventory that Amazon is not in stock on or that they're the brand owner is not in stock on. Obviously, the brand owner is going to get the, the, the best price for their inventory, and I'm not going to be able to get it lower than that. I'm not going to be able to price it lower than that and get it. So I try to sell out that inventory, even if I have to take a loss, I at least get some capital back that I can reinvest into um, better inventory that does not have Amazon or the original brand back in stock. Good question, Leslie. Um, Steve says, assuming there is a fee for using Be Cool, yes, there is. There's different pricing uh, options. At what point does it make sense to use an automatic repricer versus doing it manually? A certain number of SKUs, 20 SKUs, 50 SKUs. It all it depends on two things. Um, how much time you have to manually reprice it. Again, if you can manually reprice your inventory items every day and, and, you're, and that's a good use of your time, I, I would do that. Um, or if you manually reprice your inventory twice a week, then that is good. Um, honestly, I think anything over 50 SKUs in stock is a time. Uh, my wife just walked in and did something funny. Um, any, any, what was I talking about? No, I'm kidding. Um, any time that you have over 50 items in stock, that's about the time where I'm like, you know what, this is turning into a chore that is not worth my time. Um, and the fact that <coughs> you can pay for a tool like Be Cool to do it automatically for you every 15 minutes. That is way worth it. I, so the the three best tools to pay for, um, Be Cool is in that three. Keepa is in that three. I haven't talked about Inventory Lab, but Inventory Lab is in that. Those are my top three tools to use. So Inventory Lab, Keepa, and Be Cool are the top three things. If I had to start my Amazon business only using three tools, those are the three tool that I would use. Inventory Lab, Keepa, Be Cool. So hopefully that makes sense, Steve. Um, thank you for asking. Um, let's see. Lisa says, when I signed up for a free trial of Be Cool, it seemed kind of pricey for the amount that I'm selling. Do you have a guess of how much sales or quantity you would have to make it worth your while? I guess, yeah, if you have over 50 SKUs, I mean, it all depends on your, the repricing rules that you use. It all depends on how many inventory items that you have in stock. Um, and how often, like if, if those are replenishables or if you're always trying to get more inventory items in, um, I think it's very affordable. Um, but I do understand that, um, you know, sometimes it can be hard to make up the price at the very beginning. It's, it's when you have a business that's focused on, uh, you know, lots of inventory, um, replens that you can continually replenish, um, that you're going to be able to find, you know, easier success with those um, having inventory items that are all spread out and and having lots of different items of smaller quantities is totally possible it's just going to take more time so but i totally think that the that the lowest price option is very affordable and um and gives you the results that you want um William says, is there a rule for setting the minimum price to not lose money is what I was asking. Well, I guess the the thing is, um, there's not a rule to for you not to lose money, um, but there is a, there, you know, there there is a way to bulk on Be Cool. There is a way to add in bulk what your minimum price is, where it takes your buy costs 
and and there's a calculation where you can so it's not like a repricing rule but it is a bulk setup where you can choose your minimum price based on the buy cost of your item uh, so that you know you're not going to lose money on the sale um, let's see Do, uh Katara says, do you pause your repricer? Um, there are a few times when I pause my repricer. I will pause my repricer if I'm the only seller selling an item. Um, and and so I'll pause it then. I, you know, you you pay for, well, you, 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 when you're set up for Be Cool, you get a certain number of items that you can use uh, to, you know, to be repriced. And so, um, so if I'm not having to reprice it against competition, I'll I'll pause it then. Um, but almost all my items, I have the repricer going at all times. So I'm trying to think if there's any other times when I would pause my repricer. Um, no, I think it's it's I'm always repricing. I'm always repricing unless I'm the I'm, I'm the only seller of an item. Then I I like the price that I picked. Um, so Lisa says, without having Keepa, can you tell the quantity for sale at the lower price? Um, there is a way manually to figure out how many items a competitor has in stock. Um, I like to do everything automatically because it frees up more time. But if you want to do it manually and take some time, just go to the sales page, see who is the lowest priced. Um, item and you know click add to cart and say choose 999 items and Amazon will say whoa this person only has 15 in stock so you're not going to get 999 so, and then you know okay they've got 15 in stock so then you remove it from your inventory or you remove it from your cart so you don't accidentally buy 15 of those items because you're not really wanting to buy it you're just trying to see how many people how many inventory items that person has in stock. Um, so that's a little trick where you can do, it's called the 999 rule. So just put 999 items in stock in your cart and Amazon will tell you how many that person has in stock. So hopefully that's helpful, Lisa. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Leslie says, I wish Be Cool had a rule for used books that lets you stay 10% under Amazon. Um, that is something that we can work on. So I'm writing it down. I'm assuming you mean new books because Amazon's selling new books. So new books, 10% under Amazon. Because yes, 10% under Amazon is a lot of times where they will share the buy box, but not often. I mean, the new buy box for books if amazon's in stock it is so hard to get them to share the buy box but yes pricing at 10 percent under amazon is is a possibility i'm going to look into that and if be cool doesn't have uh, that option i will ask them i've got a contact at be cool um, i will ask them if they can set something like that up for us so um we call it the leslie darling rule so um let's see Jim says, auto repricing sounds like it works for new items, but for used books, how do you justify the price differential of a very good versus acceptable book? So there are ways in Be Cool to only, only price your items against like conditions. So you can only you can set you can set it up, and this is what we've been working on with our used price repricing rule. There's a way you can set it up to um, reprice against all the conditions, all the used conditions combined, you know, very good, like new, good, acceptable, or you can only reprice it against the, the condition. Because, uh, you know, a lot of times with used books, yeah, there's a used book buy box, your used buy box for the books. That's like the only category that has a used buy box that I'm aware of. Um, but a lot of, of customers will go and look at the options of buying used books on Amazon and, and see, and they'll be like, I want it to be very good condition. 
or I want it to be like new, or I'm okay with an acceptable book. I just want the cheapest one. Or, you know, you be cool has it set up where you can reprice against like conditions. So you can only reprice against very good or only reprice against good condition books. So it's possible we're working on that, trying to pull, pull, pull some tweaks out to get more profits for you. And then we'll add that to the bonus section of the reseller's guide to pricing for profits. All right. Um, William says, I'll be on vacation in the DFW area in June. Care to share any good sourcing locations? Yeah, I'm from the DFW area, if if, if you listeners uh, don't know. Um, and and they're going to be, um, I mean, the whole whole Metroplex is a great sourcing location. I'll just put it at that. Um, so um, I guess a clarification from an earlier question, if I ever pro- pause my, re- uh, my repricing, um, I guess I meant, do you pause and reset to the max cost? I just saw YouTube about pausing it for an hour and then pricing to the max. Um, now I've not, I've not done that type of uh, repricing. Um, the the thing about pricing is it's a there's it's a psychological thing. Certain people have a certain price that they're willing to pay, and you know, it's possible if you're the only seller to price it really high and then slowly kind of come down until someone finally bites uh, on that price. But um, but I don't ever pause and reset anything in my pricing or, or know why that would be um, something to do. Um, all right, we're starting to come to the end of our time. So I just want to let you know, if you have any questions uh, that you haven't asked yet, be sure to put that in. We'll still answer, I'm still answering questions. I just kind of wanted to let you know that we're getting close to the end. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, Let's see. Next question. Don says, any advice on how to make sure you have enough ROI when considering purchasing and pricing? Well, when I'm doing retail arbitrage, you know, I use the Scoutify sourcing app. Scoutify comes bundled with Inventory Lab. I use that with my phone, and it tells me that what what my pricing would be. And if I see, like, oh, I'll make 20 bucks on that, well, that's $20 with a wiggle room that I have. Uh, for, you know, trying to still be profitable from a sale. Um, when I'm doing online arbitrage, I use a tool called RevSeller, fultimfba.com slash RevSeller, R-E-V-S-E-L-L-E-R. Again, that helps me know my profitability. Um, and so, yeah, if I just know, if I'm going to make X amount of dollars on the sale, I know I have that much wiggle room with repricing to still sell the item and still be profitable. So hopefully that's that's been helpful. Um, so when I'm deciding on purchasing things, usually, I mean, of course, the more ROI, the better, um, and the more wiggle room I have. I do think, though, if I'm purchasing an item and I see that my return on investment might be like 15 or 20 percent, then I want the sales rank, the average sales rank over time, to be so good that I know it's going to sell very fast. You know, if the inventory, the ROI is higher, then I can go for a higher sales rank. Um, because I know I've got the wiggle room to lower my price if I need to, if it's not selling fast enough. But the lower ROI that I'm I'm comfortable with, I want it to sell super fast. You know, I want it to be in the top 1% of the sales rank category on average. Um, if you want information about sales rank and how to understand that and read that, fulltimefba.com slash sales rank. Um, and you can get my, um, I, said, I send out monthly updates of sales rank charts uh, updated for every category. So let's see. What price should I consider when I'm calculating ROI profit on Amazon FBA calculator? So when you're pricing the item, I mean, if you want to see, I would price it around the buy box, you know, pricing it, um, you know, within 5% of the lowest price, pick the price. And then you can see from there what your price is and what your profits are at that, uh, at that price. All right. So I just want to remind everybody, Reseller's Guide to Pricing for Profits. This course just launched the price. The coupon code is expiring in in a few days. In fact, Wednesday night, midnight, the coupon code profits is expiring. FullTimeFBA.com slash pricing is where you can go to get it. Combination ebook, video course, lifetime access, instant access, 60 days of going through the course and the book, 
get money back guarantee if you don't feel like it was worth it. You get the price, the the bonuses that will help you with repricing. We have more bonus pri- repricing rules coming. Fulltimefba.com slash pricing is where to go to get it. And again, the countdown is on Wednesday night at midnight. The coupon code that will save you thirty dollars off the course is happening. Use that coupon code profits to save thirty dollars off the course and grow your Amazon business by pricing your your inventory with the perfect price to get the most sales and the biggest profits. Well, this has been Steven Smotherman from FullTimeFBA.com. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Take action on what you learned tonight. Make some more money and tell me your success story. I can't wait to hear from you. I'll see you later. God bless. Bye. <laughs>